again, considering we're just talking about Zenly Zone Zero and some people not being fans and others being fans and me kind of thinking the, in, the initial part of the game didn't sell itself that well. Let's check this video out then. Can Zenly Zone Zero survive long term from Sean Set Go? Um, drop him a like and a preemptive subscription. Let's check this video out then. Can it survive long term? I think probably because it's a Hoyo game. But let's see what he's got to say. Hello, adventurers. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I think is sort of leading down the wrong path of, uh, of Zenless on Zero. Sorry, leading okay. Zenless on Zero down the wrong path. And that is, well, the current game state, at least in my opinion, the game's health overall. I think that the game does have positive qualities. I, I, I'm not here to say that the, the, the game has no positive qualities. But something that I've noticed, if you go to the Twitch space um, right now, the really the Zenless on Zero space is is lacking by comparison. If you compare like first month releases um, and the hype behind the characters, I mean, we're getting releases of. If we're talking about uh, like you know Twitch in terms of viewership, um, I just personally for me, I think that Zenly Zone Zero is just not that fun to watch. I think it's fun to play, but I just don't. Not every game translate over translates over into a viewer experience, a positive viewer experience, in my opinion. And obviously, that's not just opinion; it's a fact. You know, it might be opinion on what which games you you feel that are more enjoyable to watch. But it is definitely one of those games. It's a fun game to play, but for me, it's just not really a fun game to watch. Um, where I find uh Genshin. Star Rail and Wuthering Waves fun to watch. Personally, I know of uh, people might have differing opinions on that sort of stuff. And I think like think games like PGR is quite fun to watch as well. I think it's because it's super flashy. Even though Zenless is super flashy, I don't know. I just I just don't think it really translates across into a game that game that's incredibly fun or even that much fun to watch at all. Obviously, the creator can make a big difference in that in how entertaining they are. But yeah, but I still don't think that will really have a major effect on the game surviving in terms of being a uh, a um, a fiscal success for Hoyo because there's plenty of gacha games out there that are raking in millions every month and nobody talks about them on YouTube or on Twitch or in general on the internet but thousands upon thousands if not millions of people play them you know so it doesn't necessarily even matter really brand new characters I feel like much sooner um, I mean, this is, uh, of course, uh, a month, about a month into the release of Zenless Zone Zero. So, I mean, and it's been an amazing the, right month as well the right for time, them. Uh, or the same length of time. But we've had really a lack. Sorry to keep pausing you. Because how much did uh, Zenless Zone Zero cost to make? I'm not too sure. Um, I'm going to assume in the hundreds of millions uh, because of the, 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 it, it's it's a well-made game in terms of uh you know the the voice acting the presentation all of that sort of stuff but 100 million within the first month let's say if they have a 50 percent reduction the next month they're gonna have surely got close to covering their investment in the game within a couple of months so really after that do they even care as well i'm sure they probably do because they want it to be continual success but the amount of money that they raked in in the first month is insane. Luster, or at least a sort of a, a downturn in the amount of people uh, streaming in the Zen Zone Zero space. Now, I've said this before. I don't want this to be misconstrued as um, a negative uh, approach due to seasonal content. I think seasonal content is fine. I think any game that is a gotcha or has seasonal content there is naturally to be some ebbs and flows uh, yep. within the space, but it's pretty much the overall, the overall flow to most gacha games, if not all, really, isn't it? You have a big spike in players because there's a big, big pump of uh, content in the update, and then there's the lull of that intermediate area in between the updates, and then you have those like mid update updates that are little spikes here and there that bring people back in whether it's rewards whether it's an event whether it's a little update to the story but it's more of a, a side kind of thing a companion thing it's kind of the way they go isn't it a point that was actually brought up by mtash uh not too long ago was that the reason for this is that the content within zenless zone zero is just not content creator worthy so so 
what I mean by that is outside of just normal pulls, I, I think there is an appeal when a character's first released, um, no matter what gotcha it is, uh, to have content centered around pulls. Uh, people like to see people get pulls, and people actually mm -hmm. like to see people not get pulls. They like to um, see people fail. If you watch Tectone do his pulls uh, during Chang Li, uh, during that time, people were absolutely going crazy during that. I think these goals in leads into to character design as well. And I do really like some of the characters in Zenly Sound Zero, but I also think quite a few of the characters are kind of like mid or not even mid. They look aesthetically like really well designed. They're cool characters, but they're just like not something that I think is going to get most people like interested for the most part. I've heard a lot, a lot of other people have been quite uh, more damning than me in the character designs. A lot of people come through my comments in my chat and they're just like, dude, I don't like the character designs at all which I can understand with uh, some of the characters, I guess, for that. Personally, for me, I really like the design. I like the whole aesthetic as Enemy Zone Zero. But you know what? This is probably not really got much impact on it, but I just think the whole way you pull in Zenly Zone Zero is so freaking boring in terms of, like, the animation, the audio that you get along with the, uh, with the pull animation. I think it's cool that when you actually see a character, it's kind of like that 3D model and the camera, like, goes around different angles. That looks cool. But the whole, I think they need to revamp the whole pool system in regards to just the animation, the way the animations work in the game. Um, and I think as well, the 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 uh, the drives just look boring, don't they? They're just freaking balls. And I know some of them look a little bit better, but they're just like they're just not interesting as well for me. Um, and that's probably not got much impact at all. But I think watching people pull for stuff in Zenly Zone Zero is really boring in compared to, in comparison to a lot of the other gacha games. In that time, so in I think opinion. that. Both positives and negatives can be good in the in the content creator space for that. What I'm talking about is outside of those polls, we're not really seeing Zenless Zone Zero hold on to content creators. Um, and I think that's because uh, a lot of these games that are losing uh, content creators over time, I think there's not enough available content for content creators to actually have unique experiences or yeah. go over yeah. those unique experiences um i think there's too many big gacha games now where people are trying to jump between all of them so they're, they're, they're in 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 this game there's maybe that that's true but also they're not finding some of this this extra nuance or this extra complexity because they're trying to attack all games cover this update cover that update cover this new news on this game and there's so much happening whereas when it was just genshin you could concentrate solely on genshin and when it was just genshin and star rail you could concentrate on those two games now we're getting more and more games that more people kind of want to see and at the same time people are fans of other games don't want to see that because they're not playing that that's not their main game so they're not really interested in that i think we're starting to get a bit of a a fraction like you know a fraction or a fracture of uh, the player bases and i think it's harder for content creators to cr to cater to the audience as well in the gacha space but i definitely do think with zenlies i think because not that they, again the combat has nuance and has some level of complexity but it's really not there to that level where i think there's guide videos to be made in terms of like interesting and unique ways of tackling the game as there might be in Genshin or in uh, Wuthering Waves, um, and that and, and and Wuthering Waves is suffering in that same sense, in my opinion. You go and look around Twitch, and there's not that many people really streaming it. Um, and there's, I think, there's a lot more people talking about it on YouTube. Or when I, whenever I go into the the streaming category, there's usually only a couple of thousand people watching, um, which is not dead, but it's not like massive. Um, and then when there's an update, it usually goes up to around about twenty k, um, which is not like anything mind-boggling so i think all the gacha games in the space are kind of suffering from and i don't know if maybe it's a little bit of a burnout in the space i think maybe a lot of people are just like maybe trying out other games as well you know the, uh, there's only so much gacha i think you can take as well in a similar way to say maybe a story-based game uh or even a challenging game uh does so something that you know a lot of gacha games have especially towards end game is you'll see a lot of challenging content in the end game and so in the end game you'll find a the problem is though with a lot of end game content in gacha games it's not enough variation again i keep harping on about like the dungeons and raids coming into wuthering waves we need something like that there's only like it's there's there's difficult content but it's like it's 
I suppose, a deep, narrow pool. And I feel like maybe people would want maybe a, just a little bit more. I don't know. I'm pulling this out of my ass, but I kind of feel like that's how I feel anyway. A lot of opportunities to play with your character uh, or characters in, in a team setting that require you to like really rank everything to the max level and still like put a hundred percent effort into clearing now while i can't say per se that zenless zone zero has content that's that's not clearable i saw mr pokey clear the content blindfolded but i don't think that gotchas can necessarily hold on to enough of of the player base because it is all ultimately clearable at a certain state now i will say once it, it's all dps checks really isn't it for the most part that is one thing that i really like about wuthering waves is that there is a little bit more of the mechanical skill still it depends on the characters you've got and the team you've got i get that but it feels like it leans into that a little bit more that's why i feel like just content like dungeons and raids would be better because it's like it's content that's going to be difficult. You're going to have to level your characters. You're going to have to be ready to take it. But it's got a little bit extra around it as well, where it's not just going instant fight, DPS check, time check. You haven't got enough power at the minute. You're not using the right team. But it'd be more of an actual gameplay experience. Because um, at the end of the day, I don't think gachas are really designed to keep you long term. They want you in and out and in and out and spending really, don't they? But I think potentially people would spend more as well if they do have that that pull that's keeping them playing the game maybe not even on a daily basis but like a, a a you know at least two or three times a week but not just coming in doing the dailies and bouncing or coming in clearing a difficult bit of content spending a couple of hours to try and clear it and then coming back periodically to attempt to clear it but having something that's like right dude i want to dump a few hours into this today because this is this new experience is cool i want to run through it a few times i want to learn everything i can about it um but again, I guess that takes extra effort and time and maybe that's something that they don't necessarily want to do, but I'd love to see that sort of content. If you're free to play, if you're clearing content that's like, that still over leveled you, then it, 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 there is still a challenge associated with it. However, I think that when it comes to challenging content, I don't think there's enough of it or enough coordinated challenging content to where the whole community can get behind it and go yes this is a challenge i want to see another streamer complete it uh because it was challenging for me and i want to see it in the same way uh, a game that i played not too long ago i did i did a genocide playthrough of undertale and it has one of the never hardest boss undertale. fights in the game and never i played cleared it. it in like 50 people rave about that game but i've never played it deaths um i i have billions of views on TikTok just from that clear uh, because it is such a challenging play and a lot of people could say the same for like their challenge runs of Dark Souls I just don't think a gotcha game could ever achieve that level of challenging content to be in I think as well a lot of them don't want to because if it all gets based on mechanics too heavily then you're not gonna necessarily want to spend because if it if it does start to lean into it's more about the car less about the characters and more about you then what's the point in spending if you can clear it with all these other things that's where finding the balance is and that's where having this super end game or difficult content that's all about the characters dps checks um synergy checks whatever you want to call it that makes you run the particular teams that makes you run particular weapons make you run particular uh leveled characters the new characters have it aimed towards the new character all that sort of stuff but then there should be this other content that's end game content that leans more into the skill the tactics of a player and that's what i think again personally i keep saying it like dungeons and raids would really come into it for wuthering waves at least anyway for zenlis not too sure because just the way the game's set up anyway i think it kind of limits itself in its design but that's something that might change uh, as we go forward and obviously smarter people than me will hopefully come up with ideas to improve on that as well. Interesting because I think it'll always be just accessible enough because the way the nature of a gacha game is always going to be either accessible via uh, pay or playtime. So you're yep. either going to have enough of one of those two things to make it to where 
the challenge isn't as much of a challenge. So I don't think that there ever can be that. That they're never going to want to stop a whale clearing content, really, are they? Because what's the point in being a whale? <laughs> like, dude, I've spent thousands and I still can't clear this content. Um, uh, uh, the net that's never gonna happen. That's why I say again, if they have different content, you know, and have content that's specifically designed more for the enjoyment of the content and an extra level of difficulty there, and then have the pure uh, like bragging rights content that's about like, did you clear this in a set amount of time? Did you do this? Did you finish this? Did you do level what's it of this uh content? Um, for those people, but then again. The same people would argue that they can't clear that content if there's so you know it's it's hard to find that balance and I think inevitably just because you're a gacha game it kind of limits that doesn't it really type of thing now the, the point that Mtosh made was something along the line of like the the quest or two slice of lifey I I don't necessarily think that's the case because you have games like World of Warcraft that have very uninteresting dailies but the dailies and the 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 rewards you can get from certain mobs. Uh, world bosses, etc., are interesting to make it to where you could be doing something very unfun, but the reward system is very. It, it's very. I think when it comes to something like World of Warcraft or something, or, or an MMO in general, you've got all that extra content. What I'm talking about, you've got your dailies, you've got specific individual hard content, but then you have like a variation, typically in your good MMOs, where you've got your raids, you've got your dungeons, you've got your world bosses, you've got your endgame content, and then you've got your dailies as well. And this is where I think, in my opinion, a lot of gacha games should take stuff from MMOs in regards to specific gameplay loop uh, events and content. Because I just, I just think it would enrich the games in general, personally. Very rewarding, so you're able to get something out of it. So I don't think that a boring or slice of life, um, like cozy content, I don't necessarily think that's boring for content creators. But I do think that right now, the reward system or the, the 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 challenges within Zenless Zone Zero are just not very interesting because there's not really a system in which you can complete content in a a laid back kind of way, but still be rewarded handsomely for it. You know, like you're not being rewarded okay. for unique. I think as well though, we do definitely need to give Zenless and Wuthering Waves a bit of time as well. I know I've been a little bit harsher at the moment on Wuthering Waves. And I did in regards to the, the in the other video when we we're talking about the 1.2 update. But at the same time, we are still kind of in the launch window, aren't we? You know? Um, so I'm willing to allow for a little bit more time for things to expand and more variety to be added. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that's what it's about, is the variety of content. It's not just about the rewards and the difficulty. It's about the variety as well, in my opinion. Unique or interesting things. Frankly, all of the content that you clear in gotchas is very linear in the sense that the loot tables don't change drastically i mean in, in this game when you're completing the errands really all you're getting from it different is maybe the amount this is where for me again i understand that rewards are a massive part in repeatedly clearing content but the gameplay loop itself needs to be front and center um i think it's definitely more limited with zenless um because just the way the game's designed in general, you've got to be hyper-focused specifically just on the combat in an instance regard, which is fine. But like something like Wuthering Waves, they've got the potential to do more with what they've got, to build more stuff. That's the the reward itself isn't necessarily necessarily the reward, if that makes sense. The actual experience itself is the reward. And then, you know, it's nice to get the little reward at the end of it as well. Out that you get from the challenges, that's what varies. Uh, so, like, how much you get from each one is it varies a bit. Or maybe your pull luck does. But RNG only gets you so far. So I think right now, and this is just gotchas in general, not just for Zenless Zone Zero. I think that the, the content isn't unique enough to have any uniquely defined user experiences either by the gameplay or the reward system. Currently, a game like Dark Souls, how you complete the boss can vary drastically. And that's what makes the content. This is exactly what I was saying in regards to, I know I keep going back to it, the raids, the dungeons. You can add something in that gives some variation in how you tackle things, a little bit of strategy. This is where the end game variety needs to come in. Have the super hard content, it's just DPS checks and then have the ability to tackle things in a different way. And I know you can tackle things differently now in Wuthering Waves and in other games as well, depending on your, your, your roster of characters.
but you're limited. I feel like you're a little bit more freer in Wuthering Waves in that regard. But still, again, I feel like if we did have some sort of content like that, that maybe it'd be there. Maybe I'm too hyper-focused on that, but I just, I do, I feel like it would be a really good thing. Content interesting, um, even though you're getting the same rewards, uh, for the most part. Um, and, and, and something like Zenless Zone Zero and a lot of gotchas don't have anything like that. So my personal idea for this, I think would be interesting within this space, right, is to have boss content and unique drops, which can have unique blue tables. So you find a certain mob or you kill a certain mob that only appears in certain areas or oh, so uh, dungeons. a certain boss All that right. does have challenges, but rewards you uniquely for it. Meaning that maybe the rewards you get versus someone else's gets could be different. Um, or even if it's just cosmetics that you receive. I just think that right now, there's not a lot of unique experience within gotchas, but I think they're very much capable of doing so by simply having unique loot tables. Anybody who's played Classic WoW knows that your character is not going to look good. I like what he's saying, but I just don't know. It's like, hey, would you implement that? Visual wise, you could implement that easy. But then again, though, then if you're implementing that for the visuals, what's going to drive somebody to particularly pull something that might look cool? Um, then, right, then if you don't go down the visuals, do you get down like stats on particular items? But then what's driving somebody then to pull in the gacha system? Again, this is why I say, even though we like gacha games, there's a, there's a, there's a fundamental issue in the gacha system that kind of holds back mechanics being applied to the rest of the game because it takes away from the desire to pull on the gacha system, doesn't it? Um, so it's all about finding that balance. Uh, I, I, again, I think this is something that, you know, you, you, it's not as simple as just saying, well, I think you, you should throw in some uh, different gear like this because then it would really affect the rest of the game, I guess, in a negative way. And then they'd have to react in terms of how they design the next gacha, the next banner or... They'll have to dial back the gacha system and make it a lot less generous. Um, I'm not too sure on that one what the fix is. We know what the issues are, but it's finding the fix. This is where, for me, the reward itself should be in the gameplay loop of the end game itself. You know, it being engaging, it being rewarding in regards to clearing stuff, it having variety to, to it, it uh, you know, having decent rewards. But that's not just the the end game. Because for me, having things like that alloy smelt in Wuthering Waves and and whatever your dailies, you know, little thick quick things that you can jump into, get particular mats to get particular credits or whatever it is, they are fine to be there. Because the stuff that you because for me, if you're chasing mats in the game, it should be able to be stuff that you can. It's got a little bit of difficulty to it, but it's actually it, you know it's it, you clear it quickly because it's like right. I need 10 of these. Let me go clear that thing three or four times. I've got my 10 things. I can level my character up. You know what I mean? You don't want to be spending ages on stuff like that. But the content for me that is endgame stuff should be a bit more engaging in the sense that, again, the content itself is the reward. So it, even if it takes a little bit longer to clear, you don't mind because it's almost like doing your companion quests or something like that. It's not. In, I'm not saying it's got a story to it, but it, it just feels engaging. Um... Of course, you need rewards to go along with that, but I don't think that should be the, the, the main priority for that sort of content, in my opinion. Then you can add the difficulty as well, and clearing it itself is the reward, if that makes sense. But getting Savage Gladiator's Chain is insane. It's insane. It's a lot of fun. Uh, like, I, I, I got my Warrior uh, in Classic WoW, cleared Molten Chlor, cl cleared AQ40, uh, cleared Nax, and so... Clearing that content and getting the gearing in there feels so much more significant. And I don't think gotchas are necessary. Like they're becoming more and more like RPGs. Why don't we have unique gearing and unique experiences like an RPG? I've always advocated for multiplayer and raid dungeons and, and, and co-op dungeons and things like that because I think it could offer unique yeah, experiences. I do agree with that. I, just I agree don't with know that. if they're like the servers are not a surprise. I agree that with that. A lot of people complain about multiplayer within gotchas, but I think it could be a unique experience. I do sense. as well. You know, they could have a, you know, room with friends. They could have matchmaking systems. I think it could be really cool. So right now, I think that's one thing that I think is holding back why 
the game simply just doesn't have a large viewer base on Twitch. The other thing I want to talk about within the space... You could really have your roles as well, couldn't you? You go in as your DPS, your support, your, support, your tank. It's, oh, it's, 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 it's there, man. It's there for the taking, in my opinion. That I think that uh, another content creator, uh, Hex Juice, who I've been burning through her content in absolutely tons of amazing points uh, within the gotcha space. I think some of the best opinionate, opinionated gotcha streamers and, and content creators um, have amazing points, not just for the health of a particular game, but the health of gotchas altogether. And a point that she made that I think was really good is that I think that tribalism is one of these things that prevent, like connecting it to my prior point, I think that tribalism is one of those things that I think is preventing the overall growth of the game because you have so many people who are advocating for the game's detriment because they refuse to admit fault within their own space. And so while a lot of people say you shouldn't compare this game, you shouldn't compare Zenless Zone Zero to we Weathering Waves, uh, you shouldn't compare Weathering Waves to Genshin Impact, I think that these things are natural in a competitive space because there is a competitive nature to these games. Even though there's not always multiplayer, all these games are competing for the biggest multiplayer of them all. I think it's totally fair to compare games. I think especially games that, uh, I, I suppose, the overarching umbrella of being a gacha game, you can necessarily, I guess you can compare them in that sense. Um, obviously games are a lot more similar in regards to like, you know, Genshin and Wuthering Waves to me are a lot more similar and they're much more comparable against each other than say Wuthering Waves to Zenless. You know, for me, I, I, I think Zenless is a lot more comparable to like Solo leveling Arise and, and PGR and, and Snowbreak and other gachas that are a little bit more like that. Um, well, I think it's fair and... I think it's it's healthy to compare games as well because uh, but this is the problem where I think a lot of people get really stuck is with the tribalism of the if this game's got this element oh another game can't take that element I, I, this is upsetting me somebody who I've got no connection with came up with this idea and it's making them billions millions I don't think it should be in this other thing but it's like if that thing translates into this other game and it makes that game better and it's something that's better for you, then that, as a consumer, that's better. That's why I like Wuthering Waves, because it took a lot of the stuff that worked in Genshin Impact and kind of peeled away some of the stuff that wasn't so fun and didn't work so well. And I think we've ended up with, in my opinion, a better version of Genshin. You know, it's like an evolution of Genshin. And that's not to say that I don't like Genshin or it makes Genshin worse. Uh, you know, it doesn't. I just, I, I, in my opinion, that's what gaming should be. Now, obviously, when uh, people add uh, patents on particular mechanics, that's different, and, you know, companies can struggle to replicate them. But in my opinion, I want to see games look at other games, copy the homework, and improve on it. Because at the end of the day, I just want better games. And I think sometimes people get wrapped up in that. They're like, oh, I, I ain't playing. I can't play Wuthering Waves. It's just a copy. It's just a copy. It's just a copy. Um... And I think people get stuck on that stuff sometimes. So that's where, like, this is, tribalism in, in itself is inherently negative. It has lots of positivities if we go back to philosophical things about humans in the history because the tribe protects itself and the tribe allows the tribe to grow. But at the, at the, uh, at the peril of other tribes and other things, it, 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 you know, it's just, it's inherently positive and negative. Um, it's just how us as consumers express that and i think sometimes we do it in a really bad way don't we because we get wrapped up in that idea that we're attached to the corporation and i suppose it's it's exacerbated in the gacha space because of sunk costs biased of people have spent lots of money in these games it's not just time it's time and money so they feel a little bit more protective towards the thing that they have they've, they've built to buy us up they've built an affinity towards oh and that is your time and attention and i think while comparison is bad for your own mental health and your own self growth, it's great for game health because yep. we get we get exactly. What is it? Comparison is a thief of joy. You shouldn't spend your spend time comparing yourself to other people. You should always strive to better yourself. But when it comes to other things like games and the stuff you enjoy, you should definitely compare it to other stuff. If that thing's doing something that yours is not, then why not demand? Well, we I want that. That that's gonna make this thing better and. 
competition dri drives everything up and makes it better for us, doesn't it? To see versions of things that could work in another space, at least in a semi-adjacent way. Now, a lot of gacha games will have modes like the simulated universe. Uh, in AFK Journey, it's the Arcane Labyrinth. Um, and they have these modes that semi-match modes, which we can kind of see like, oh, here's a version of the game we could see if it was this type of genre. But I don't think that gotchas right now push enough into these separate game modes where we have actually interesting gameplay. An example Agreed. of this that Agreed. recently came out is with uh, League. They recently came out with, I think, either like a rogue. And I think that comes back to the fact that them being gacha games, I think a lot of the fear in the gacha space is adding too many things that might detract from the the gacha system itself and make it less profitable um this is what i was talking about you know regards to gear it's a tight rope to play for them because if they start adding all this sort of stuff in that comes from the gameplay it detracts from the potential uh profit from the gacha system itself it's finding that balance um, but i definitely do think they need to start thinking about the gameplay itself being a reward um which i understand the pools the characters the teams the rewards the clear in particular content is almost like the dopamine reward in itself but i think one thing that genshin did when it came out is that the game itself was the reward that it was more of a game with a gacha attached rather than a gacha with the game attached and obviously we saw that with other games as well now that have come out and i think we need to start seeing that with events and end game content that the content itself is the reward and then there's rewards that go along with it as well light version or like a like a vampire survivors s i guess it's still like a roguelite which has a completely separate game mode and before then it was team fight tactics with battle chest so i think that there's so many game modes that we could fully flesh out within gotchas Agreed. and i think they get boiled down to mini games which don't have a lot of value or interest over the he's basically just eloquently and uh concisely said what i was trying to say before in the previous video regards to the filler content in 1.2 in my opinion in the it's they're just like mini game events almost um and it's just like you know clear this in 30 seconds you get your reward clear this in 30 seconds you get your reward you get another point you've cleared everything done that event's cleared now and uh, where itself the event should be a little bit more meaty long term but Bringing it back to my first point, I think these things could be beneficial to Zenless Zone Zero and Gotchas as a whole for the content creators to be able to stream, to be able to have something that you could play actively or casually that is interesting and not yep. just challenging, but also has value because you get unique experiences yep. out of it. It's why it games like, fun? like, even though you have uh, games like fall guys and and rumble club etc these games are competitive by nature but they're interesting because how people react to them are different and i think that gotchas at least in their story modes and the mini games have very limited reactions or at least they're pigeonholed into a very small condensed form of content and when content creators don't have a wide range of content to pull from and stream, it leaves a very little option for be able people to be able to play something interesting in the space. So I think that instead of going, my game is infallible, my game can't, it doesn't yep. need to be fixed. This goes all the way back to the console war. At the end of the day, it doesn't benefit the thing that you enjoy. Taking it back to Genshin, I put up the video um, about uh, Natlan and potential fixes, updates to the game that could make Genshin better. It wasn't titled that. It was more titled, you know, can this save Genshin or can this fix Genshin? But we're speaking about, you know, the stamina system, traversal, end game content, dailies. And there were, you know, it was most people kind of agreed, but there was a few people saying, it's fine. It doesn't need, and it's like, but surely if you enjoy Genshin, you can't really argue that dailies could be better. The stamina system could be better. The traversal could be better. Endgame could be better. And this all could make the experience as a Genshin fan better. It doesn't detract from anything um, f in regards to Genshin. It doesn't even affect the gacha system as well. So it doesn't take away money from your precious overlords. 
Well, yeah, there's that idea that no, 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 it's perfect. Because if it, if things change and I accept that they might need to change, then it goes against everything that I've kind of said about the game. And this other game kind of did that. And I might have to accept that those were good ideas in that other game. And that's just stupid. Games do not need to appeal to content creators. Let's drop all this pride and embrace some humility so we can make some actual comparisons so some of these extra game modes can be fleshed out in a positive yep. way people were dogging dogging any game that has a fishing mode because they're like fishing is like is like the worst of the worst it's like the the, the terrible trope within games that people absolutely bro i love myself a good fishing mode i do <laughs> can't stand i love a fishing mode I'd, I'd have a fishing mode if you put a fishing competition i'll be the first one to participate i i did the booty bay fishing competition and i made sure that i did that first in any patch that i could because there was always unique rewards that you could get and you always had to be on top of your game and anybody it's just zen as well man like it's just chill you know it's nice to have those sort of things in the game sometime it's just like this is just zen you know it's just something you could just do you can kind of switch off You've got someone up on the second monitor. You may be chewing down on some food. You're knocking back a beer. You're smoking a doobie. Whatever it might be. But it's just zen, you know. Anybody could win it. Anybody could 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 put it in their hat, put it in their, their bed, and, and, and win it. And it just, it's just a matter of effort and timing. So I think these are ideas that like, I, I don't want to force anybody to have to do. But I think what we have from the community is truly a lack of a lack of thinking about the game in the long term so i think yeah. what a game like zenless zone zero and a lot of gotchas are missing right now is we don't have a lot of people thinking about the long term health of the game i think it's all about the rewards where the game needs to go it's what people get wrapped a up in month, two months down the road and then I story editions has so much opportunity to for, for the game to have long-term health but i think a lot of people just want to think about the short term and the short-term gratification and then they wonder why their game is it it goes up it plateaus and then it just sinks and then plateaus again i think the game you want the game to be like this and that's totally normal yep. but right now i'm seeing a lot of gotchas whether it's weathering waves uh sendless zone zero afk journey where it's just going up plateaus drops plateaus again and it could be lower than its prior plateau and so i think when we think about these long term it's just it's just a lot better for the game overall but hey you know i i respect it i, I, I respect it you know if you want to keep the gotcha simple i think that's totally fine that is totally fine well i think there's plenty there's a lot of games in the gotcha space now there's plenty of simple gacha games not everyone has to be that you know not every game has to be hardcore not every game has to be super casual it's nice to have games within a genre that cater to different sections this one's more about skill this one's just about being super easy this one's super simple this one's got nuance and complexity complexity to it this one's got incredible story incredible you know there's this is where we need to stop thinking like this that oh it's a gacha game it has to be these you know it has to fit these exact specifications for it to be considered good. There's there's a, ver there's a different train of thought for everybody, isn't there? And I think we're starting to see that happening within the gacha space in terms of the uh, the style of games we're getting. It's it's about the gameplay now. That's what it's about. Um, I I don't think that games these games need to be taken seriously and i'm not saying these games need to be made no game needs to be taken seriously anybody. unless you're doing it as a professional i'm saying um end of the day overall supposed I to be fun the health isn't of it? a game like zedless zone zero it, it's beginning to make sense why there's so few people streaming it just you know what less than a month after its release um and why a game like afk journey you know they're, they're the worst of it i mean like they have like less than 100 viewers on a great day they have less than 100 viewers um but that being said the youtube space these games are thriving and they're doing very well so i think these games have an some games as well anyway in general again some games just don't translate across to being content worthy they're not enjoyable to watch but they're enjoyable to play they might not be enjoyable to stream but then some games might not be enjoyable to to, to watch somebody stream but they're enjoyable to watch 
info about, whether it's lore, whether it's characters, whether it's about the story, whether it's about updates, whether it's about news, whether it's about guides, character builds, whatever it might be in a short little few minute video, um, whether it's a, a big retrospective of the game itself, a big 40 minute video. That's the thing with YouTube content. It can kind of be anything, can't it? It can be, it can be created and ingested in a totally different way to streaming. You watch a live stream, you either watch it live or you miss it and you watch it back after the fact. It's, a, it's the same content, really. You watch it live or you don't. YouTube videos, you can watch for a few minutes. You, you can bounce out. You can kind of like you know, ingest it in, in smaller sections, have it on at night as you, I don't know, you can do this with streams, but it, it, it's a little bit different if you're trying to take the information in, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm not really explaining it in a really good way there, but um, I think it's just different, isn't it? Um, the content caters in a, to a different audience, or maybe even to the same audience. It's just feeling to, 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 to take in some content in a different way. Or, or 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 look at a at a particular game in a different way. Like I love to watch videos sometimes about a game that I'm not interested in, but just to you know, I like to watch Josh Strife Hayes, you know, doing um videos on MMOs that I've never even freaking heard of. That's got like two people playing them, but I'll sit and watch a video of his for like 45 minutes on something like that. I wouldn't watch somebody stream it for 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah. Enough notoriety to where people are watching them. But there's a reason why they're not being streamed. And I think streaming health Get banned, bot. cannot be ignored. It's something that can't be ignored in this space. Because while like there will always be content on YouTube that'll get views, I think that um having a streaming health within a game is also important as well. I don't know if there's any like notable data of like comparing stream health, like how many people are streaming it and people are viewing it, uh, versus uh, you know, like like what looks like on the opposite end of things where it's all on the YouTube space uh, and which one is better overall. But I feel like having a good mix of, of both, even if it's less so, is better than just having news on YouTube only. Um, I mean, it's why we see drops on the Twitch space so often. I feel like it's important so we can recruit new and active players down the line. I hope this inspired some ideas for you. Um, if, it, if, if you thought any of these ideas were good or if there's any ideas that you think might contribute to the game's health overall in the streaming space, I'd love to hear it in the comments. If you haven't joined us and you haven't joined the, jo the Go-Getters, we are streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, playing Zenless on Zero AFK Journey. And Honkai Star Rail is kind of like on the back burner, but I've been playing that in- No weathering waves! Uh, I don't want to hear what he's got. I, I just don't care what he's got to say anymore of weathering waves because i haven't really jumped back into weathering waves yet um uh, but i'd love to have you uh, uh but until next time guys i appreciate you and me fortune favor your journey i'll catch you in the next that was a really good video actually i i love these sort of like uh what would you say introspective uh, video looking at the the game and trying to come up with ideas in how it can we can improve the game uh, i'm a stupid idiot you know i, I can criticize things easily but coming up with a, a fix or a way to make something better is a lot harder to do, isn't it? Um, I've, 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 you know, I've said things that I think could make specifically Wuthering Waves because that's the one I play the most better um, in regards to endgame content and extra content as well, in my opinion, which I'm not going to go over again because I've already said it. But uh, this was a really good video, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I checked this out. Uh, Sean set go. You should definitely check this dude out. It's nice to see a fellow millennial playing gacha games as well. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, and as I said, this is more on Zenly Zone Zero, but the whole time I was watching this, I was kind of just thinking of all these things being issues with Wuthering Waves as well. Different issues and affecting the game in a different way because the different games. Um, but I definitely do think as a whole within the gacha space, not all, but most gacha games kind of suffer from this in regards to the way the content is divvied up and 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 how we're rewarded for it not just the rewards in terms of actual like materials credits in-game stuff like that but the reward the enjoyment reward um like for me a lot of the content when i found in wuthering waves i'm just kind of going through the motions because a lot of it's just like oh i'll get some asteroids out of this i'll get some mats out of these it's not that engaging in itself it's kind of just the same content that i've done before like the simulacra was kind of just the same content oh i'm just fighting multiple bosses here Oh, I've just got to do it in a set time, get out a set amount of damage to get my points to clear the thing. It wasn't that interesting, if I'm honest. It just feels like filler stuff. I want something that's a little bit more stimulating. 
that gets me going a little bit more, that's more engaging, that's more enjoyable, that, that, that adds different elements and different mechanics all into the same thing. And again, I feel like raids and dungeons would be perfect. Um, but I digress. I think there's plenty of other ways to improve endgame content and extra content in these games as well. But that was a really good video. Can Zenly Zone Zero survive long term? I think it will. It's a Hoyo game. But uh, I agree with a lot of what he said in that video. Some really good points. Uh, so definitely check out Sean Set Go.